all cultures throughout history, food has intrigued and occupied us. But what defines a great food experience? And how can we take it even further? We aim to find out by exploring unconventional methods and innovations, as well as ancient techniques. This is Tasteology. You see? The egg or not the egg, this is a question. No, cooking or not cooking, this is a question. What does cooking mean? Very difficult question. It could be considered as applying heat to some food product for three reasons. To kill the microorganisms, to make it softer, and the next one is flavor. A flavor that is appealing. And indeed, it is even appealing for apes. It has been shown uh, that apes in the wild, or not only apes, but animals in the wild, prefer cooked food to raw food. Hervé Thies, gastrochemist and father of molecular gastronomy, has dedicated his entire career to uncovering the scientific processes behind cooking. In 1996, 1997, I discovered that this cooking is not a question of time, it's a question of temperature. I, I wanted to demonstrate my theory. So I made an egg at 61, 62, 63, 64, for four hours. And I, I discovered that at 67, 68, the yolk was like a pomade. It is still orange. You have the, the, the flavor of a raw egg yolk, but you have some tenderness. In the beginning, the, the, this egg, I called it the perfect egg. <laughs> and the perfect egg is everywhere in the world now. Allez, bien fait d'appeler, parce qu'il y a des bons aujourd'hui. Ah oui, mais ils veulent ôter, oui, oui. Ah oui, d'accord. Vous avez un verre de je vous sais pas. Ah oui, ok, merci. Ah, merci. This one is a, is a modern sauce. There is no, nothing apparently new. And this is the, the yolk, probably at 68. At 68, it, it is very soft. No, it's, it's slightly over 68. It's probably 68.5. It's very soft. You have the taste of raw egg. This is well done. You know, the, the question about eggs is funny because eggs for me is, is only an educational tool. In the egg, you have the proteins. So you understand meat, you understand fish, you understand everything. And you see the boiling water is, gives a bad result. So below, it was called low temperature cooking. Although the studies of low temperature cooking are quite new, it's a technique that has been used throughout history, all around the world. Steaming, for example, has always been an important part of Colombian cuisine, a method that's making its way back into fine dining, thanks to chefs like Catalina Vélez. Trained in the toughest of schools and kitchens in Paris and the US, Catalina returned to her home, Colombia, to explore her own cooking heritage. I guess I'm a cook that love to be a naturalist. And when uh, I get to a different village in my country, I try to get all, every single technique they have and they still using. I try to put it in my kitchen in a new way. If you look around of the world, Everybody is getting back to the roots. We're trying to get back to be more real. That's the word. We don't need more fake anything. We just need to eat real food and nourish people. 
Yo no quiero... Vitapao es un tra tradicional dish uh, that has the same because... Es como si a mí me ponen a probar. It, it, it used to be cooked inside of the land. And anyway, they go to fish and come back. When they came back, the fish is ready to eat. So we're going to see it today uh, made in the traditional way. Hello, darling. I have a community that I love. Uh, it's Humanismar. It's a village located in the end of the Anchicaya River. They do the tapao. It consists in you open a uh, hole in the, in the sand. You start some fire with wood or some uh, stones. Then you put some whatever you have, like little leaves or whatever, hel helps you to keep the food uh, far away from the fire. We're gonna use uh, fish that already is uh, dry with salt, uh, some bananas, it's, they're green bananas, and herbs, as what they are. And we, we cover the fish, and what we do is just put it in this leaf, so this big leaf is helping us to keep the fire from the food. You get a lot of steam that comes from the wrapping up in the leaves. The steam gets only to 212 Fahrenheit, so all the time is the perfect temperature to, to cook a fish. When you have the right temperature, what you do is you seal the uh, the moisture inside of the liquids inside of, of, of the food you're cooking, like the fish in this case. At the same time, when you have la, uh, the correct amount of time, what you do is to cook slow the food without breaking up the, the fibers. So you get a very delicious product in your mouth because it almost melt when you eat it. Imagine that you take a piece of meat, okay, you put it in the oven as it was done before. If you have one kilogram, you finish with 700 grams. With, with low temperature cooking, you begin with one kilogram, you finish with almost one kilogram, you serve one kilogram, so you, you get what you paid for. When you use a cheap meat with low temperature cooking, then you get a wonderful result for a very cheap price. And it's even better than using uh, meat for grilling at low temperature. So low temperature cooking applies to any kind of proteins. But for the vegetable, low temperature cooking is very bad. And you can make the experiment very easily. You take a pan, you put slices of carrots and water, and you, you eat at 50 Celsius. Imagine that you eat for um, 20 minutes. The, the carrots are, are hard like stones. If you try to cook these carrot slices afterwards, you, you don't succeed. Many see everyday cooking simply as heating up a product. Hervé Thies is of another opinion. As a result of his extensive research, Thies has divided cooking into five categories, each with its own advantages. There are many, many different ways of cooking. My proposal is to categorize this way, with contact by a solid, a liquid, or gas. Then there are the possibility of radiations, and finally there are some chemical way of cooking, like uh, acids, uh, salt, sugar, and different compounds like this that you can find in your kitchen. The brown products, you get them at higher temperature, but, but the, the time of cooking is shorter, and you get the crust with a contrast of consistency, and everything is better, if you like it. <laughs> With the same meat, you, you can eat the meat in water. The effect is the same, but contrary to, to this result with the solid, you don't lose the juice, you make the stock. As long as you have water, the temperature cannot go over 100 Celsius degree. Now, you can do exactly the same with another liquid, oil, and then this is frying. Because it's heated, the meat is shrinking, and then the water is flowing outside the meat, 
And because the, the temperature is much bigger than this one, you have the steam. No oil is going into the meat. No oil. Because it is not possible because you see, the, the steam is under pressure. So the steam is flowing and flowing. How could oil come in? So there are many misconceptions about frying. So now, next one, hot gas. So with steam, depending on the way you are doing, you can have low temperature or 100, because if you close the vessel, then you can have 100. Colombia has many places uh, where you can go and find those uh, traditional methods of cooking. Every single cook is trying to get those techniques because smoking is still being a very good flavor and very interesting flavor to get into the food. When you caramelize in, in a pan or in a grill, you get all the ingredients out and then you brown it. So the Maillard effect. Then steaming is perfect for get all the nutritional value of the food and get softer flavors so you, you can mix them up. Um, and I guess what we're doing right now, chefs around the world, is getting all those techniques mixed so you can get the best. Slow cooking, sous vide and steaming all help to make texture smooth. But what if you want to bake the kind of bread where a moist crumb is just as important as a crispy crust? Here, humidity plays another role. Moisture on the dough's surface creates more starch gel, and that leads to a crispier crust. We should decide for a goal, and when you have the goal, you decide for the way in order to reach the goal. We should never follow recipes, except from the art point of view. But from the technical point of view, we have to, to think and to make the right process. In the old time, I call the name was the perfect egg, but it's not perfect, it depends on your taste. Someday I prefer the 65 and someday I prefer the 67, so uh, no one is better than the other. <laughs> Sous vide was a well-kept secret in restaurant kitchens for years before AEG first brought it into the home. Sous vide, French but under vacuum, involves vacuum sealing the food in a bag and slowly cooking it in water or steam at a low, precisely controlled temperature. 56.5 degrees for a superb medium rare steak, for instance. The vacuum sealed bag prevents any flavors from escaping creating a richer taste experience, while the low temperature ensures that fish or meats are cooked evenly all the way through without ever getting overcooked. It also helps you retain juices and nutrients, making the food healthier and crisper. The end result? A unique combination of flavors, nutrition and texture, unlike anything you've ever tasted.